Oh, no, 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 it's not shirt. These are pants. Can you put your pants on? Okay, here. Step into them. Does this make sense? Am I making sense? I'm not making none. I'm sorry. All right. Here your pants notes. Now iron these. Put your pants on. We are back, everybody, on Point Four, where we have Arlita Hole, filmmaker, co-director of Finding Your Laughter. Thank you, Arlita, for being here today. How's it going? It is going great, and it actually feels great today here in Chicago. Thank oh, you for having me. Awesome. Not a windy day, huh? No. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Arlita, we're going to be talking about Finding Your Laughter. It is a um, you know great topic you're exploring, great um message and it is really a, a message of overcoming adversity and you know watching your heroes fade and then um how do you find strength in that process and um how do you how do you show up in the world when um things around you you know are you're losing things and um in the process of losing things so with that can you introduce yourself a little bit as well as finding your laughter? Sure. So hello, everyone. My name is Arlita Hall. I am a filmmaker, co-director, uh, comedian from Chicago. I do stand up, sketch and improvisation. And I am also an actress. So how I and the most important thing that I believe that I've done is be a caregiver for my father, who was a person with Alzheimer's. So I started making a documentary about my experiences with him. I ended up quitting my job in 2018 as a human services caseworker for the state of Illinois. So I was like determining eligibility for like Medicaid and SNAP benefits. Um, so with that, I really loved my job. I had a career. So my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And because I had already experienced that, because my grandmother had Alzheimer's. So I watched her forget who I was, forget who my mother was, forget who the family was. So I knew what it looked like. So I did not want to like, I wanted to make the most fun out of what was going on with my dad. So I decided to leave my job, become his caregiver. And while I was doing that, I would put like videos on social media of like of me and him like stepping, dancing or just laughing or him getting confused and then me going along with it. And then people would say how much they loved it. So I'm like, mm, I think I got something here. Yeah. So I end up reaching out to one of my friends who, uh, Brittany Alsla, who was actually my uh, co-director. She edited the trailer and is another filmmaker in Chicago and talked to her about actually making a documentary. So we sat down and that's how we started working on this documentary together. We have been working on it for a few years. And so basically what the documentary is, is me being a stand-up comedian that uses improv as a tool to validate my father, who was a person losing himself with Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. It is, you know, interesting, you know, a couple of things that resonate with what you said is one is validate and through humor and that's particular skill set and particular inclination that you have. And, you know, you can either laugh at cry or cry at tragedy and how do you, you know, which one do you choose and how do you make the best of the situation? So it sounds like that's what you're doing. You know, you said you wanted to have some fun with your father. And I think, um, you know, it, it probably is safe to say that you also wanted to spend time with him in his final moments. You wanted to be close and, and be there for him and, you know, make the best memories for yourself as your father is passing into, you know, Alzheimer's and where he may or may not remember you um, soon. And how long is he going to be alive? I mean, I would imagine, is that safe to say those are some, some of the thoughts and motivations that were going on in you? Yes. Um, it was all about like, OK, I want to be around him. I want to be, be, you know, a part of the process as he is losing himself. And then I also wanted to like support my stepmom because her and my father had just moved in to take care of her mother who passed with Alzheimer's. So right after she passed away, here comes three years later. And now oh, it's wow. my father. Wow. So it's like, no. And she was like, no, I can do this. I'm like, no, you cannot do this. This is wow. hard. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, it was um, a true process of learning how to like accept the humor and then also like accept when everything isn't fun, you know, because isn't fun. Like, yes, isn't yeah. fun or yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And then now I'm making a documentary. So like, and I'm a first time filmmaker. So, and I'll like, as a first time filmmaker, when you're writing grants, when you're writing a proposal, when you are actually writing the treatment or script of what you're looking at, I had to detach myself as a caregiver, a person, and now I'm a character. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. 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 So, and what did you find in that process? So I found like through the process, like as we were like applying for stuff and as I am a character, what is the end of this film? So it was like at the time I was still taking care of my father and I was not like wishing death upon him. Of course. But, like, <laughs> I'm like, what what is the end? We end it with like, this is what we're doing. And then he ended up passing away. So oh, we're like, oh, oh, yeah, wow. he passed away in 2022. Oh, so wow. now it's like, okay, you know, now we got now we're including grief. Now I'm now I'm processing this as a caregiver. So now this character is not just me. It's like right. I'm watching, I'm writing myself as a character experiencing this, and then I'm yeah. actually experiencing this. Right. So it became like um therapeutic, then also kind of like chapter. Yeah, therapeutic yeah. super because yeah. now I'm like looking at myself yeah. as not myself, and then yeah. as a witness. I, yes, as yeah. a witness to it. Yeah. And then I'm doing stand-up comedy on stage about this about going through it so like as much as it's hurting me to go through it like when I'm telling these stories as an outlet people are coming up to me after the shows like and it don't it doesn't matter like the race ethnicity the height <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the pronoun th this the person right. would just come to me and be like yeah. I'm dealing with this too yeah, such yeah. such in my family or you know I would realize that people would be hurt about Alzheimer's and it wasn't even them my friend is taking care of their mother and it just hurts to talk to my friend and not know what to say so it's like looking at you putting um saying like you agree with your father no matter how much was what he's going through that helps to like give them that kind of tool so right. it's like the film became right. like um not just a, a out like okay I'm making this cool documentary but now it's like no like now I have something like to at least encourage people to yeah. like you know subtly help them to deal with this so which like and while I was making this everything kind of came together so like I quit my job start taking care of him and then I also started doing like um an intro to caregiving workshop about like how to use improv because I'm doing improv now on stage mm -hmm. with all these people and I'm using the same technique with my father mm -hmm. and then my bachelor um, of arts is in liberal arts and, liberal arts and sciences with the mm -hmm. emphasis in corporate communication mm -hmm. so now I'm like combining these two and then my mm. actual one-on-one -on -one caregiving experience with my father and then at the same time of taking care of him my great aunt is with dementia so mm. she's more clear than my dad but now i'm dealing with it on two spectrums which mm -hmm. is devastating to my family on my mom's side and my father's side mm. so like the only thing i have to bridge these two is the humor that i'm using with them both okay. So I created like a workshop to start like called like take care to like intro to caregiving to like teach people how to story tell like in the moment. So because it's hard to deal with it, like, you know, what's going on when you're taking care of someone. So like to try to story tell, like using those comedic tools that we use in comedy to try to adjust in the moment to try to take um, take a different perspective. So you're not just dealing with anger or sadness. So doing all that and then trying to like make a film. So it has mm -hmm. been the an art, the art part about it. Like I've became a true artist with this entire caregiving process, which is like giving me so much like joy and purpose that I never like, I don't want to say I never had, but like I've always been funny, but my best jokes are about me taking care of my dad. You know what I mean? Like, and it's because Alzheimer's just isn't typically funny. It's something mm -hmm. that you see on TV or if you see a commercial, someone is typically like really sad or they're in their corner alone. So like the entire um, process of me making the film was just to try to add something different to the culture of Alzheimer's and then something different to the culture of caregiving and then an outlet of humor. I'm sorry. I know that was like a no, long way. No, no, no. That's great. That's great. And I'm still here and I'm totally attending to it. And I think, you know, one of the things to follow up on with what you said is, is, you know, you're bringing tools to be in the moment and to have um, a different kind of awareness around what's going on, right? So you can choose it. So you don't have to be sad or depressed mm -hmm. or um, wanting to have a different experience as you're wiping somebody after they have just gone to the bathroom or whatever it is. You, you're bringing some other perspective to it that we as humans can do to change our awareness of the situation and then change how we feel about it. And all of a sudden make something, you know, 
different, better, happier, more meaningful. So what are some of those tools? I mean, part of improv, I know, is, you know, rolling with the moment and yes. and saying yes and being a part of it and and committing to something instead of pushing it away. What are tools that or other tools that you found that helped you be present and turn what could be a, a sad or, you know, heavy moment into something not? So um, another thing, like in addition to like the yes and method with improv, like we, like you said, we say yes, we go along with it. But then um, the reason like I think improv works in an additional tool is like being authentic, like authenticity. What is really happening? You know, sometimes yeah. I think we try to attach an emotion to it before we are like, no, what what just happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like and then um, having empathy as a tool i think we um mm. and i try to teach that like within a workshop within like also within the film like everybody doesn't and people will say like i'm not all i'm not i don't have it and i, I try to teach empathy as a tool like a light switch like you turn it on when you get in a situation as a caregiver and you turn it off when you leave you mm. know what i mean so it's like yes this person is dealing with a dis-ease they are not at ease mm. like, that's the mm. biggest thing to remember they are mm. not at ease like mm. so when you kind of can look at it like that mm. then it can be like the extra like maybe second to deal with what's going on and I would never sit on here and say like cleaning my father or trying to direct him and shower him is easy it is so hard so I try to teach also like in in those hard moments it's okay to take five minutes to yourself to breathe to cry mm. to go outside and scream mm. to do what you need to do because we have to be real. So I think like sometimes being real and then what, what you find from being real is humor. Like mm -hmm. a lot of humor, a lot of things that we think are funny is the flat out truth or something we can right. relate to that happened yeah. in our lives. Yeah. So when we can identify that in the situations that we're dealing with, especially caregiving, like when my dad, when I first cut my hair off, my dad swore up and down, I was my brother. And then he thought I was such a good brother. He was like, you are such a good son. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy that, you know, yeah, and right. it would be, I was like, yes, I am a good son, you know, yeah. like, and my yeah. mother and my stepmother couldn't stand it. But I don't like that he thinks that. And I'm like, I think it's funny because yeah. my brother at the time was in denial and it was really hard for him to accept that my dad was like that. It was hard for all of us and everybody didn't think it was funny to go along with what he was saying. And then I'm just like, well, it kind of is. Then we all kind of came along, came around to it. But it used to crack me up. He thought I was just so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so it's, things like that. It's interesting. You know, it's interesting. I wonder if your brother came around uh, like you did or if he was um, in denial or he, he didn't want to face it. Maybe it was kind of like your father's, you know, the reason he saw you as that obviously it was part of the disease, but maybe there was something subconscious going on and needing to connect with his son as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but that said, um, you know, those, you know, what you said about the truth and, and being real and authenticity, you know, there's so much, you know, oftentimes we kind of ignore what's just happened in front of us, maybe because it makes people uncomfortable. And the yeah. more uncomfortable something is, the more potentially funny it can be. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's what that humor and that laughter is, is bursting the bubble um, of, of kind of pretend. Um so, you know, as you, where you are now, you're still making, you're still in the process of making the feature, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. you're still in the process of making the feature. I know you've had some big strides and, and I, I know you're um, working with some really accomplished people that, you know, we can share and reference and post and people can check that out. And um, I know you were a part of the um, uh, uh, former IFP thing. So, you know, you're, you're kind of rolling along at Gotham. Um, yeah. So you're rolling along here and, and you're doing the filmmaking thing. I mean, that's, that's everybody, you know, cobbling it together, reaching out to this person, that person trying to, you know, finance it, doing that whole dance, which is very difficult. How, however, you are at a position where, you know, you've you've come a long way in the in the development process and um, you have this kind of short slash trailer that you've made to, you know, uh, concept. As you're seeing the work that you've done now, whether it's been emotionally as a caregiver character, whether it's in the storyline of that um, short trailer. 
what meaning and in reflection on your father's passing mm -hmm. um it's been now a couple of years mm -hmm. what have you taken away what how have you grown what have you learned what is the message um so as a caregiver i learned that when someone passes you it's not over um like you still are processing that because you are so used to taking care of someone that you have to kind of figure out what to do with yourself next. And I say that because you're still in like this tornado of doing these kind of um, processes, these things for them. So what really helped me and my family was grief therapy a lot. Um, being able to be honest about what we were going through, being able to be honest about how we all felt and being um, the therapist telling us it's okay to be honest with each other. It's okay to say I'm having a very hard day. So like me, my siblings, my stepmom, we were really in it together trying to figure out how we felt for like six months. And it really, really helped. So I would say grief therapy helped a lot. And then um, honestly, like getting, going through it because, because I'm a comedian at heart, I was like, okay, I'm not, I couldn't just do the same jokes I was doing about my dad before. It didn't feel, because I'm so built on authenticity, it didn't feel real to just have this audience thinking that my father is alive because they'll come up to me afterwards and be like, you're doing such a good job. And I'm like, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> so I was trying, I was in a process of figuring out what next because as um, just like life, it just keeps going. Like comedy keeps going. The film keeps going. People are wondering what's what's next. So now I'm like, I have to get back into me and who am I now? So what um, I learned th throughout this entire process, like I said, I do use improv it to stay in the moment of life. So I stayed in the moment, tried to figure out how to get, bring the film together. It brought me to uh, becoming a sisters in cinema. I kept applying for grants um, and I and I, I added grief to the film. I started doing like, instead, I would talk to my therapist. And another thing I would do was because, I don't know, we live in this world of uh, like recording ourselves and taking pictures all the time. Um, I would do like self-tape videos of how I felt um, that ended up being like golden for the documentary. <laughs> like never knowing, you know, so you never know sometimes what you do that just becomes art. And um, the last thing I would say was to keep, I wrote, wrote a lot and which kind of helped me. So now I do jokes about my father's passing and which I never thought I would be able to do, like, um, which has really helped me. And so now the film contains grief. Now we're working on adding like, after the film, my stepmom, me after my father died, my stepmom and my mom became really close because they were here for the kids trying to get through it. So now they're like best friends. Now we're like, mm, that could be in the film. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I felt like, just going through life and just accepting what it is like that's kind of, my dad used to say it is what is and i feel like that's what stuck with me like it is what it is like this is just what it's gonna be you can sit here and cry all day about it and i did i had days it took me i would probably say the first eight months of my dad dying i probably cried every day let's mm -hmm. be honest every single day oh, couldn't yeah. i get out the bed for father's day i thought father's day should have been canceled the first year because of me <laughs> but um, growing, going through that, um, it just helped me to understand that you have to be real. Everything isn't funny, but what comes from it, comedy is tension and release. So if there's no tension, how can you release the comedy? So you got to go through some stuff, like, you know, yeah, have yeah. to go through, yeah. like, to excuse my, excuse my French. Yeah, and, I feel, no, it's all good. and I feel like that's all filmmakers. We have this grandiose, like, grand idea. I'm going to make this film. And then we have to figure out how to make other people believe that this film is good enough for them to put money into because you cannot make a film on your low budget. <laughs> so I, I started to look at myself as other filmmakers. Like, I'm a filmmaker just like them going through this process of what it takes to make a film. And I'm blessed because I'm an actress. So I know what it feels like to audition and not get the part. So I could send out a hundred auditions and get and only be, you know, on first hold or first available for maybe 10, which is a big deal, but you're not going to book everything, you know? So I look at things like that, like you're going to get the rejection. You're going to get, you're going to hit these walls. I went to my first film festival in 2020 before everything shut down. It was the true false film festival. And I went on a lot of talkbacks after the film festival. When I'm listening to these Veteran filmmakers tell me that it took them eight years to make their documentary. It took them oh, 10 yeah. years. Yeah, oh, yeah. It um, took 
we started right. off doing this thing this way and it turned yeah. out being this and we had to study these subjects yeah. and all these things that they have to go through to actually get to the narrative because they also have to be touchy around the, the characters that they deal with because these are real people or you know so yeah. i learned yeah. that i'm blessed with because i'm a filmmaker and this this is a narrative documentary about myself i can like i have the boundary like i'm okay with exposing what it really feels like to be a caretaker, what it, really, what it really feels like to be a comedian, what it really feels like to be a black woman and being in Chicago with no real resources for being a caregiver for, for someone with Alzheimer's. So um, it just helped me to understand that um, my story is unique and, and, and also a story of a many people when it comes to creators just have to push through it and create or else their art will just never make it off the ground. Well, that's sort of the thread that I'm hearing is, you know, creation, expression, creation, expression, and being in the moment and processing it and continuing this, you know, uh, chain of events is, is something that's allowed you to heal. Yes. Um, and it may sound corny, but um, improvisation saved my life. Yeah. Like I started doing improv and stand up comedy like around the same time my father was like diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So to be able to like, I'm putting all these things together, then they're like, you yes, Santa do this. Then I'm with my dad and I'm just like, oh, this this whole thing just like, it, it really helped me yeah, to like yeah. have a better insight on what, on how to, on how to like, you know, approach how frightening life can be. How fragile. Yes, yeah. how frightening. How frightening. 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 Yeah, life yeah, can be yeah. really, oh. it's a lot. So oh, yeah. like, yeah, so yeah. like yeah. empathy, humor, yes. um, and just yeah. um resilience, like being in the moment. Yes, yeah. in the moment. Like yeah. that's yeah. all we got. Yeah. I can only yeah. do one yeah. minute at a time. Yeah. This is all I could do. Yeah. Empathy, humor, staying in the moment. What else did you say? Um being um, present, resilience. truth. Yes, I mean truth. All, all those things are are what add up to the resilience, you know, that you're mm -hmm. talking about. And it's really just amazing because, you know, I'm very into yoga and yeah. the yogic texts and the Hindu philosophy, and that dates back 5,000 years. So yeah. that's what it all boils down to. Everything you've just said, you know, staying present keeps you connected with life and that makes you feel alive, you know, whatever's going on. Um, and it's not easy to do, especially in a society where there are all sorts of different pressures. Um, how have you been changed in your journey committing to this work? Oh, so um, it's like I established so many things while I was caregiving for him that once it stopped, I was like, oh, I have to keep these things going. Like um, people have, my friends and family have donated to my film. They really believe in this for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that I did my first crowdfunding campaign the week that my father was in hospice. It's just how it was set up. Wow. So people were in double support because of that. So it has given me like drive. Um, the workshop that I've been doing, I just did it last month. I'm a Sisters in Cinema uh, fellow with Yvonne Wellbond as my um, ex like consulting executive producer. And I have a cohort that we meet and just keep each other accountable. And I've just been trying to keep going. And with comedy and storytelling, since my story has changed, I've changed with it. Like now mm. I'm talking about other things in my life outside of caregiving. And but I still bring up caregiving to address grief because it's still people in this room that's dealing with grief. People are dying every single day. So me adding some humor around that helps. So I would say me as a person and because I'm not taking care of my father anymore, I'm able to do more things. I'm able to travel. I'm able to share my story other places. I just did like a dementia arts festival in New York where I was able to host and and bring other people together that do art around dementia. So I will say like the leap of faith that I took to do my film to storytell. And I say that with anybody, no matter, you don't have to make a film, but I would love if we all could do that. But if you just start by writing down on paper, what it is you're going through, the truth of what reality of what it is and what you're feeling about it, the least you have is a story. We all have a story. So that's what it has told me that I have a story and that my story is important and it's important to share um as art because no matter what shape or form art is in whether it be music on the canvas like these are my stepmom's pictures behind me mm. um people um can resonate with it it's it's a mm. moment outside of the anxiousness of society like i said in the moment when i stay in a moment it keeps me here and it doesn't keep me going too far ahead or too far in the past i'm just right here dealing with the now so it has this this whole entire process has just helped me to appreciate the now of life and what I can do and how important it is. 
I love that, Arleta. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You know, what is um, fascinating is, well, I, all of it's fascinating, but there's something in telling our stories that allows us to reflect on those stories. And as we tell them, we can also write them. We can also determine where they're going. There's Mm something powerful in that process that, you know, we are not all just victims of uh, fate, but we can work with the world to create, co-create together. Um, Arlita Hall, uh, filmmaker, director, thank you so much for being here. The film is Finding Your Laughter. You're nominated by Catherine Gongaware, and we look forward to posting more um, where we are going to be able to see this film, anything that, um, you know, you have along the way that you'd like us to share, we'd be happy to. Thank you so much for being on the show, Arlita. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Till next time, everybody, I'll play it forward later. We're out. Um, where's the